Hey guys, all right, so we've got one more example of uh, using the definition of a limit to show that a limit exists. So example three here, uh, use the definition of a limit to show that limit as x approaches two of x squared plus one equals five. All right, so uh, again, with direct substitution, it's pretty straightforward. You know, just uh, substitute two in for x, two squared is four, plus one is five. Um, nothing too complicated there. But using the definition of a limit to show this is a little more complicated. And as we're about to see, it's going to be slightly more uh, involved than the first two examples we did. So, but again, we want to show that for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero, such that if absolute value x minus two is less than delta, then absolute value x squared plus one minus five is less than epsilon. All right. So let's come back up here and start working on that. Um, so the first thing that we should do is uh, write fix epsilon greater than zero. All right, so we're already given an epsilon that's positive, but just to be thorough, we can write that first. So fix an epsilon that's positive, and what we're going to do is give back a delta that probably depends on this epsilon, um, such that this is all going to be satisfied. All right, so what we do is first take this, um, just like before in the first two examples, we're going to take this and simplify it and see what happens. So first we can drop these parentheses, right? So we're going to have uh, absolute value of x squared plus 1 minus 5 less than epsilon. So we've got that first. All right, so x squared plus 1 minus 5, that simplifies to x squared minus 4. All right, so we've got this so far. Um, now what can we do next? Well, let's go ahead and factor this and see what comes out of that. So that's uh, x minus 2 times x plus 2, absolute value less than epsilon. All right. So um, just like in the last video with example two, uh, we're going to use this property that the absolute value of AB equals the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. All right, so we can split um, absolute values uh, up like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be um, absolute value of x minus two times absolute value of x plus two less than epsilon. Okay. So uh, we see we're kind of on the right track here uh, because here we want to have a, if absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, then we want this to be true. This we just reduce to this. So in other words, um, if absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, then we want to have this true. All right, so here's our x minus 2 again, but now we have an x plus 2 kind of ruining things for us. So right away we see that um, this is a little more complicated than the other examples where we just had x plus 1 or 4x minus 7. Um, so even just introducing something as uh, simple as x squared makes this whole thing a little more complicated. So how do we proceed? Well, the trick is to remember that we're taking a limit as x approaches 2. And when we do that, uh, we only care what's happening if x is really close to 2. So if x is far away from 2, like if x is uh, 700, or even if x is 4 or 0, okay, that's not close enough to 2 to matter. So uh, the idea is that x is really, really super close to 2, uh, as indicated here, if the distance between x minus 2 is less than delta. And remember, uh, delta represents teeny tiny positive number, right? So um, basically, x is really, really, really close to 2. It could be bigger than 2, it could be less than 2, but it's extremely close to 2. So we can just assume that. All right, so from here on out, we're just going to assume that x is really close to 2. So let's assume... Uh, that x is, let's say this, within uh, one unit of 2. All right. So we're just going to assume that uh, the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. So in other words, uh, let's assume that x is within one unit of 2. So let's go ahead and come back up here. Um, let's erase this stuff here. We're kind of done with that. So we're, let's assume that x is within one unit of 2. In other words, let's assume this. Uh, let's assume uh, that the absolute value of x minus 1, sorry, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. All right. So the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. All right. So uh, this is how we translate into math what we said here in English. 
So let's assume that x is within one unit of two. That's what this is. So um, what does this mean, really? This means that, uh, remember, if you have absolute value of a less than, uh, I don't know, big M, then what that means is that negative M is less than a is less than M, right? So we have that. So how does that help us? Well, let's go ahead and apply that here. So this says that negative 1 is less than x minus 2 is less than uh, 1, okay? Now, what we're worried about is this x plus 2. We kind of know how to handle the x minus 2 because that's uh, bounded by delta, so we're okay there. But what, we wanna wor or what we're worried about is this x plus 2. So let's go ahead and add 4 to everything here. Add 4, add 4. So here, uh, this becomes 3 less than, this becomes x plus 2, and then this becomes uh, 5. All right, so that's good. Um, why is that good? Because now, um, if this is true, then uh, what can we say? Well, then we know um, x plus 2 is less than 5. Okay, so yeah, that 3 is here, but the 3 is actually kind of irrelevant, so we can just ignore it. So what we have is x plus 2 is less than 5, so that means the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than uh, 5. Okay, so now uh, that's good. That's good because now we can use that here. Right? So just to recap what happened here, um, remember, the trick that we used was that we're taking a limit as x approaches 2. Therefore, we're allowed to assume that x is really close to 2. So we just said, let's assume that x is within one unit of 2. We didn't have to pick 1. We could have picked uh, 1 half. We could have picked 1 tenth. We could have picked a third. We could have even picked 10, 20, or 30. Right? But um, 1 is good enough. So let's assume that x is within one unit of 2. So that means that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. Okay, uh, the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. So we translated this into an inequality without absolute values, and then we added 4 everywhere because we had x minus 2, but we want x plus 2. Okay, we want to get some bound on x plus 2. So that's why we did this. So now we have x plus 2, and it's bounded between 3 and 5. And yeah, the 3, that's good, but we can uh, just use this and say, all right, if x plus 2 is less than 5, then that means the absolute value of x plus 2 uh, is also less than 5. Okay, we can just automatically say that, that's fine. Um, technically speaking, it'd be the absolute value of 5, but absolute value of 5 is, of course, just 5, right? So we have this, all right? So now, um, because we've assumed this, then we have this. Uh, let's erase this and write what we have now. So let's bring this all back up here. <clears throat> so uh, x minus 2 times x plus 2 is less than epsilon. All right, so because of our assumption here, um, we now have this. x plus 2 absolute value is less than 5. Uh, so, so how does that help us? So then x minus 2 times absolute value of x plus 2 uh, is now less than absolute value of x minus 2 times 5. Okay, Because absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 5, then um, we have this inequality here. Absolute value of x minus 2 is uh, times absolute value of x plus 2 is less than absolute value of x minus 2 times 5. All right? So basically just take this inequality, multiply both sides by absolute value of x minus 2, uh, and then we have this. So how does that help us? Well, we want to show this, right? This is what we want. We want this to happen. Um, but we've shown now that this uh, is less than this. Okay, So this right here is less than this right here. So if we can make this less than epsilon, then automatically this has to be less than epsilon because this is less than this. So uh, it's kind of it's pretty much the transitive property. If this is less than epsilon, then this automatically has to be, because this less than this less than epsilon. So how do we do that? Well, we can just do that right away. So um, basically, let's summarize what we want. We want if x minus 2 less than delta, then we want this less than epsilon. So let's just, uh, let's make absolute value of x minus 2 times 5 less than epsilon. All right, so how do we do that? Um, well, first divide both sides by 5. So let's get rid of all this stuff down here. All right, divide both sides by 5. 
that we're going to have absolute value of x minus 2 less than epsilon over 5. Okay? So what we want to do is have this true. And now we're good because we've gotten rid of our x plus 2. Um, basically, we've turned this into a constant by assuming that uh, x is really super close to 2. And we're allowed to assume uh, we're allowed to assume that because we're taking a limit as x goes to 2. So um, I guess I shouldn't say we turn this into a constant, but now we're putting a bound on it. Okay, we're putting a constant bound on this. So basically what we did was we used the fact that uh, x is really super close to 2. So if x is really super close to 2, then this whole thing is going to be less than 5. Okay. Um, so... Uh, and also, as x gets closer and closer to 2, this thing gets smaller and smaller, but it's always less than 5, so we can always just have this uh, inequality here. All right. Um, so basically what we want is, if x minus 2 is less than delta, then x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 5. So we just choose, choose delta equals epsilon over 5. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Um, and then that's going to guarantee that this happens. So what we did is we reduced this all the way down to this. All right. So just to recap what happened real quick, um, we started with this. We want to show that for every epsilon greater than zero, there's a delta greater than zero, such that if distance between x and 2 is less than delta, then uh, absolute value x squared plus 1 minus 5 is less than epsilon. So first we simplified this. We got x squared minus 4 then we factored it and we ended up with this. Okay, So now we see, okay, here's our x minus 2, that's good, but now this x plus 2 is ruining that for us. So what can we do? Well, the trick to remember is that we're taking a limit as x goes to 2. Therefore, we are allowed to assume that x is extremely close to 2. So let's just assume that uh, the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. All right. So um, because we do that, then we can modify that inequality uh, to get a bound on absolute value of x plus 2. And that's what we did. That's, how, that's where the 5 came from, remember. So we had negative 1 less than x minus 2 less than 1. Uh, we added 4 to all of that, and we ended up with this. All right. So that's good because now we can say, OK, this part uh, is less than this. So let's make this less than epsilon. And this is easier to work with because now it just has the x minus 2 from the uh, delta inequality. And that's kind of the uh, idea there, is to simplify it so that you just end up with that. And then multiply by a constant, that's OK. We know how to handle constants. Just uh, when we get this inequality here, just divide both sides by 5, and then we're all set. So it is kind of uh, a little confusing, and it's kind of complicated. But um, it's definitely more complicated than example 1 and 2. But the idea is pretty much the same. Just um, start by writing out what you want to show, algebraically manipulate it, simplify it, and so on and then use the fact that you're taking a limit as x goes to 2. And remember that because of that, you can assume that x is really close to 2. And that's how you convert something like this into something with this that's easier to work with.